All righty. Nobody's out here earlier than me. I'm out at the jetties. It is number one, foggy. And number two, black, black, black. Um, don't try this at home, kids, unless you have, uh, you know, a chart plotter or radar. I've got chart plotter. I don't have radar, but at least I know where I'm driving via my chart plotter and GPS. So what I wanted to do is get out here really early and really survey what's going on. It is Super Bowl Sunday. I remember, remember many years ago when the Super Bowl was in January, how I used to refer to it sometimes as Superfish Sunday. Because the weather would usually be pretty uh, good for fishing. Well, being that it's foggy, that's one of my number one things that I like. So we'll see what happens today. I'm going to actually wait for a little bit of sun up before I can do anything because uh, I can't see outside the boat. All right. Let's see what happens today. So, mm, it's really misty and everybody and their brother seems to be heading offshore. I guess before the big game. I didn't even know it was the Super Bowl or anything. I don't have a clue about anything like that. Alright, let's see if I can't get re-anchored up here. <laughs> that's my first that's definitely over 20 inches it fought like a redfish all right I gotta do that again <laughs>
this is the reason I hate Florida. 22 and a half inches, just like the first one that I caught. I gotta throw them back, because I'm only allowed one over 20 inches. Which is about as stupid as all hell, because you should be rewarded a little bit better if you know how to catch big ones. So, here we go, gotta let her go. I eat fish. That's part of my groceries. And I have to catch smaller trout. It's total, total bullshit. Alright, well, that was my, I would have completed my limit, but now I gotta catch a small one. Damn. 99% of all the hoo-yahs out here are sheephead fishing. There ain't nobody trout fishing. They're sitting there dabbing their crab. And I'm penalized. It's like, you know, it's like anything else. It's the government taking the food right out of your mouth. That fish right there would have been fantastic to be able to give my mom dad and had a fish fry, a little fish fry over at their house. Nah, can't do that. I've already thrown back. I've thrown back some, uh, uh, what, 14 inch or. Oh, that makes me sick, sick. Yeah, who the hell needs who the hell needs 15 sheep's head at 12 inches? You gotta be out of your mind to have to want to sit and clean all those with a bunch of people on the boat. I've done it. I've cleaned as many as like 35 in one sitting. It took me about four hours. I could have gone and done another d damn half day charter on that. Just doesn't, none of this, none of the fisheries seem to make sense. Because I guess it's just a bunch of office, you know, shirts sitting around making the rules. They don't know diddly squat. And a big deal is fisheries ought to be regionalized. Seriously regionalized. Just not like us having six trout and two reds and then over there having something. I mean, honed in regionalized. I can't believe I got two redfish today because I actually got two small enough to keep. They gave us two redfish. They should have just simulated Georgia instead of beating up the same size redfish all the time. for the day I got more than my uh, limit of trout which you know the limits only six so it's not like uh, all that much I probably caught 15 trout two reds threw back only one 14 incher 15 to 20 inches six per person one of your six can be over 20 inches well I had what? Two 22, 23 inches, and I think I had another, another like 21. But 
everybody always asks me what I'm using for, for bait after on the comments below my videos. But I'm always using live shrimp on the float rig. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a second here and show you what the float rig is all about. You saw it in action. You see it in action in almost every single video. But what it is, is here's about a 24-inch leader, okay? Sacrificial, 20-pound mono. And what it goes to is a little tiny number one hook. I use these. They're called Matsuos. It's the sickle bend. Sickle bend turned in eye. And then you can see, if you can see that, what I do is I snell them because that's the strongest knot in the, in the world. See, it's got a turned in eye, and then I snell it, so there you go. I mean, so then your 20 pound, 24 inch leader goes to a sinker. Around here in Northeast Florida, we refer to this as a trout lead. Okay, that's one ounce. And it's got two swivels on the end because that's a good one. Then I double the line right here and I make a knot and it goes to a bead. And then I got my float, which this is uh, my double whammy secret float. That float is made to be pulled underwater that far by a one ounce float. I've got a two ounce right here that's a two ounce. You can see the size float difference. And there's the two ounce lead. Okay, so this goes down. You got a little space here. The reason I do that is because when I put it away, I split the double line, put it around the reel handle. So then it's got a bead that comes down on top of it. Well, the most important thing about the whole entire deal is right here, I got a stopper knot. It's a little piece of mono tied to my line. And this slides up and down on your line. So what it does is you set your depth. Your float goes up. Let's say the stopper knot's right here. The float goes up, boom, bangs into the stopper knot. So that's the float rig, and you have to know your depth, and you always want some current. And uh, we flip this out, set at a certain depth. There's my stopper knot right there on my line. Uh, it's very easy to always measure to your depth. You know how long your rod is. This is a seven foot rod. And um, if you're fishing 12, I measure from the stopper knot to the end of my hook. 12 feet, if I'm, let's say I'm fishing in 12 foot, I'm gonna set it at 11 foot, nine and a half, 10, 11 foot. Keeps your shrimp up off the bottom. What this rig is all about is the fact that we have a lot of tide here in Northeast Florida. We've got exaggerated whopper amounts of tide. Today's the new moon or uh, damn close to it. So when you have the new moon, you're going to have even more tide. Again, this mono leader here going to, the, going to the float is totally sacrificial because you want to be able to just break it off. So that's a little bit about what you saw me doing today. And uh, what I do here, I've shown this on some other videos is I split this line like that, where I have this loop. And what I do is I go around my reel. And this keeps everything all nice and tidy for when you're doing 40 miles an hour down the river or when you're going 55 miles an hour down the road. Okay, so now I tighten it up and this is all nice and tight, being held secure around the reel. So that's what I did today. That's float rig fishing. That's what I refer to as float rig fishing. 
A lot of times people will call it in a freshwater environment. Many times they refer to it as slip float. I also today tried it. I took uh, this basically the same light little rod and I threw the matrix shad and uh, the pink champagne color with a white head and they didn't want nothing to do with it. Water's too cold, I think. And they're, they're really honed in on them shrimp. Something very, very easy to eat. Because I could throw this and then throw the, the float rig right in there behind it and a couple casts later and the float would go down and hell they had to be watching this pink champagne dancing across the rocks. So that's basically float rig fishing and that's what we do. You go out fishing with me, that's what you will be doing. Uh, except for the middle of the summer I throw jigs, we throw jigs, we bottom fish, and we float rig a lot. Float rigging is so easy, I'm addicted to watching my float go down. When your float goes down, all you do is you reel, bam, fish on. Because when he takes the float under and eats that shrimp and takes the float under, that automatically means hook's already in his mouth, right? So you don't have to do anything except reel, come tight on the line. There's no Bill Dance, Roland Martin, Hank Parker, Jimmy Houston, none of that stuff. You don't have to set the hook like you're swinging for the fences or nothing. So, we're gonna go back and uh, make the donuts now. That's what I refer to as cleaning fish, is making the donuts. Giant ships going by, tooting the horns in the fog. <laughs>